Unfortunately for the, you know, public YouTubers, I'm putting the decode on my website. The way I've structured Vlogmas is I have two sets of videos. I have one set of videos that are coming out on YouTube and another set that's coming out on my website for contributing members. If you are a member at any level, you have access to Vlogmas for free within your membership. And memberships start at $15, it's not a lot. You can subscribe to my second channel, join the Discord group, go to my website, sign up for free as a site member or become a contributing member and access additional material, access Vlogmas, and participate. I'm watching the Adjustment Bureau while painting my nails and uh, right near the beginning where he was in the bathroom with, uh, what's her name, the girl. And then he comes out and makes a speech, lies, and then he comes clean and he says that what made him famous or most successful was the fact this that he was authentic and yet he'd been lying so now he's on the authenticity path and uh, but the Adjustment Bureau has already been on their case I want to preface this video by saying that the decode for this film ties in perfectly with what I've been talking about in the last few videos it talks about the the pyramid structure the base consciousness, manifesting, ascension, the story of the separation and reunification of the divine feminine masculine, conquering the physical, leaving the physical mindset behind, leaving the fear behind. It's got everything in it. This film is perfect. I highly recommend that you watch this decode. If you are even at all curious, it is well worth your while. So there's something that he's already done that sparked an issue. Part of it was just meeting her, but there was something else that happened. I'm not sure yet what. Okay, this part's weird. Mm, I don't, still don't know his name. Matt character is walking through his own office and everybody's frozen. He literally walks into his office and the bureau's in there scanning people frozen. Okay, so now he's on the run. I was like, I'm trying to figure out what that, what that means. So what happened right before all this happened? He was on the phone to his colleague. Hey, 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 Matt just told that guy that he met Elise on the bus. And all they were repeating was the price point's too high on these things. So I haven't figured that out yet. Ixie, cut it out. Okay, so his name is David. <laughs> so he's talking about the adjustments that they do. And he says, you're supposed to spill your coffee in the park so you could miss the bus and then you would arrive at work 10 minutes late so that you would have missed us. So when we think about all of these things that happen in our lives, these little sort of, okay, we'll call them adjustments. When these little adjustments happen in our own lives, you know, things like getting stuck in traffic when you thought that it should have been smooth flowing or, uh, coming up upon construction when you're late for work already. Things that annoy you. So those sorts of little things, that's what these guys do to keep you on track. You're supposed to stay on the story. And I'm not exactly sure yet why it was important for them to have this interruption for, 
for David to miss the Adjustment Bureau in his office. Maybe it has something to do with his campaign and they need to adjust the guy who's managing his campaign because he was supposed to lose the campaign. I don't know yet, but obviously it's important enough that they are uh, out of alignment because that didn't happen. So these little things that happen in our own lives are usually we say to ourselves things like, well, maybe that had to happen because it kept you from being in an accident or it kept you from running into somebody you didn't want to see or, you know, all of these little things, which is what they are. So when you think about, let's say, for example, you have a desire for something and you want to manifest something and you say you say you want to manifest meeting um, meeting this person from your past it's like an old friend so you've been really thinking about this person and this old friend shows up and you're not there you got into uh, a long lineup at the bank when you're trying to get some money out so that you could buy coffee or whatever so then when you left the bank, somebody came in front of you and had a heart attack, so you had to take him to the hospital because there's no one else around. All of these little adjustments to keep you from meeting. And there's a reason why you're not supposed to meet at that time. Either you're not ready to meet them or you know whatever. That's how you apply that to our life. Adjust your mind Again, that has to do with like the manifestation stuff. There aren't literal men walking around doing this, by the way. This is an allegory for what happens in the universe to uh, affect other people into lighting up with your, manifesting your desire. His new desire is to be with that woman. But this, I'm not exactly sure if this started before that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly when it started to go awry, but that's what this is, that's what's going on here with the, with his story. They change your mind for you. Oh, they change your mind for you because they change your mind for you. So when you, when you want to manifest something, you don't really have free will. So you get thoughts in your head to do something and you don't really know why sometimes it's like well i don't usually go this way why did i decide to go this way kind of like during you know those events that uh are on the world stage you usually go to work that day but something made you go a different way that sort of thing okay so while the internet is down <laughs> speaking of interventions or adjustments i'm going to talk a bit about decoding it's kind of strange how I even got into it because um, it happened in 2020 and somebody in my comments said, are we missing something? Talking about COVID. Um, so I started to look at things from a different perspective and I think, uh, well, I learned about etymology and everything from Santos. That's Ixie, by the way, in the background. Yeah, so I looked into to decoding COVID and came up with some really interesting insights. You can see that um, on BitChute, that video, well, there's a couple of videos. The first one I think I ever did was um, called Decoding Coronavirus. And then another one, I had to take it down off YouTube because of, you know, and then, <laughs> And then there was another big one I did was uh, decoding the RT-PCR. That was interesting. There were a lot of things happening at the time that were weird, symbolically suggestive. I mean, pretty obvious. The ships, the Titanic stuff, playing violin in the toilet paper aisle, Madonna in a bathtub. I covered all of that. You know, over the years, I just built on my knowledge and my understanding of how to read the codes. Bill Donahue was a big part of understanding what those codes meant. And that was how I got into seeing the one story because every decode I did was rep repeating the same story. 
as well when I was doing the TV watching you videos. They were showing how um, all the stories intercut and overlapped perfectly. It was as if it was like one, it was as if it was one big story, which it is. When you're doing the, the TV watching you stuff, and if you haven't seen those videos, highly recommend it. It'll blow your freaking mind. Just give it a try, see what you see. It doesn't matter, just see what you see. And then, you know, maybe years later when you're better at it, go back again and try it again. The things that you start to see, you see that there's messages, you see that, that there's overlap and there's, you know, segues and interconnections and how everything is interconnected and, and overlaps and is telling the same story. I think one of my, there's two videos that I did in, I think it was 2020 or 2021, that talked about this, that revealed all, all the world's a stage and, you know, like literally, um, the fact that we live in a TV. And I'm not, I don't mean literally live in a TV. I mean, it's a screen and we are projecting our inner story onto the screen. So it works like a TV. And I've, sh I've made a video that shows how that works in terms of light and, you know, the light spectrum and the rainbow realm and everything, the prism and um, the IXXI also refers to as within, so without, as above, so below, refers to what you have within is projected outside of you and through the eyes, I, I, and XX is the mind. So the eyes take the image from inside and flip them and project them outside. And in projecting it outside and understanding what's going on outside of you, you now make the subconscious conscious. This is why decoding matters because then you're able to read what's going on inside you. And you'll understand what these adjustments mean and why they happen. And you'll understand what your star story is. So, yeah, there's a lot of people who don't understand what I'm talking about, think that it's solipsistic or that it is, you know, you think the world revolves around you, you think that you're God. You, I am God. You are God. And the world does revolve around you. So, it is a, it is a hard pill to swallow. It's tough. I get it. And it, you... You don't swallow it all at once. You take it in small doses because it's it, it requires a lot of adjusting to go from believing in the 3D to understanding that you are the creator or the manifester of your reality. So the internet's back up. We can go back and watch this now. Back in the old days. <laughs> You used to memorize people's numbers. Okay, so you can't burn it if you memorize it. But you know, when you're in the age of technology, you don't have to remember anything. <laughs> so even writing down a number is kind of old school. Teleported into his office. So now he's seen behind the scenes that he's not supposed to see, which is why he's in trouble with his bureau. To me, that's like seeing the strings. I made a video about seeing the strings in 2020 as well. At the time I found it disturbing and now I find it, <laughs> I find it amusing. <laughs> so did he, I think they adjusted his, to change his mind about the investing in the solar panels. Okay, so what I think is going on here is he's a politician and that's, red and the blue, caught up in the duality, being told what to do. He's a puppet on a string. He started to break loose when he binned his speech and he talked about, he binned his speech and he talked about authenticity. He realized he wasn't being authentic, he wasn't being his true self. But this was after he met her. And there was something about her that sparked something in him. She's the divine feminine. She's like Millie from Free Guy and he's like Guy. He's used to doing what he's told. When you're a politician, you have a team of people who tell you what to do. You're kind of a mouthpiece. They tell you what to do because 
in politics, your image is everything. So image is everything. It's all about how you appear to be in the 3D, the duality system. So it's all about appearances. It's all about doing the right thing. It's all about doing what other people want you to do. Then he comes to the realization after meeting her and kissing her, just like Millie and Free Guy kissing him, kissing Guy, it awakens something in him. So he then turned things around by saying, you know, uh, I got to be authentic. So at this point, because he's been doing things for other people and he's been playing the duality game, he's realized he hasn't been authentic because he wasn't allowed to wear the tie that he wanted. It's just a symbol representing that he hasn't been authentic and he hasn't been able to do what he wants. Not that that's the only reason why he hasn't been authentic. So he's decided to, to take the authenticity path and he wanted her. He realized that what he has been chasing the whole time is her, but he thought it was this duality game. So he thought that the duality was what he wanted, but realized it's the divine feminine that he really wants. What it really is, is he's chasing true love. That's what he wants. It lit a spark in him, and now he's following that path instead. And this adjustment bureau is tweaking things to try to keep him on the duality path. He's following his heart. He's following, he's trying to figure out who he really is. And these people want him to keep quiet. You can't tell anybody. There was something that I had in my head that was a breakthrough moment, and now I can't remember what it was. As I've said many times, the one story is about the uh, separation and reunification of the divine feminine from the divine masculine. And so they meet in the bathroom, and she's sitting on the counter with the mirror behind her. So in a sense, she's kind of an illusion. It's like she's in the mirror, right? So they meet and he is captivated by her. It awakens something in him. And so he's now chasing her instead of following the duality path. He's now on his authenticity path, following his heart's desire to find his true love with the divine feminine. And these people, the Adjustment Bureau, they're there to adjust uh, so that he stays on path with the duality plan. And Harry, one of the bureau guys, just told him that he's kind of like an angel, but he's more like a caseworker. And they live longer than humans. And they're there to monitor the whole world so that they can rearrange all of these people, but they have, they're, they're low on manpower. <laughs> so he said, uh, so, so David asked why they don't want him to be with Elise. And Harry said, well, all I can tell you is that the amount of manpower, again, that's been put on to your case means that it's really important that you stay apart. So it's keeping them apart. He says, no matter what you do, you're not going to find her. They burned her number and he says that you won't find her. You'll be disconnected. You, the phones will go down. She'll have moved, what have you. Like, you just won't find her and you live in a city of nine million people, you won't find her. This whole sort of story spell that happens where he meets this woman and he's captivated by, and they're separated, and they're separated by the duality system, because that's the whole story here. And so you have to want the truth to find it. You have to want it enough to find it. So your your desire and your perseverance in wanting that desire has to be stronger than the pull of duality is basically what it's saying. And the pull of duality is his career and all of the other distractions that have kept him from his authenticity path and finding his true love, finding the divine feminine. And so they are now doing everything to keep them separated because that's the story. So the separation is, is the, uh, the spell, the misunderstandings and miscommunications. But in his case, he's privy to it. He's privy to not why, but he's privy to the fact that they don't want him to be together. So we're down again. <laughs> 
I wonder if this is one of my adjustments. I have had spotty internet now for about two weeks. I've been looking for a way I can do decodes faster than I did before, and maybe this is the way to do it. I can't present images on here without going into heavy editing, which I'm trying to avoid. So let me know if you like this format and um, I can get a lot more done. I think what I might do is these types of videos, I'll do like reaction videos to movies doing the decode stuff. But if there's a movie that's like, don't worry darling, that's really intense and requires a lot of introspection and intense examination, let's say, I'll do a separate type of video for that because I mean, don't worry, darling, I keep going back to it. I think I've seen it six times now. Every time I look at it, I get something new. Every time I think about it, I see something new. It's so layered, it's so perfect. It, that film, I can't say enough about it. <laughs> you really can't. If you'd like to see the rest of the decode for the Adjustment Bureau, just go to my website and become a member and join the Vlogmas program. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, see you tomorrow.